Hi, this is Sirisha from Master of Business Administration, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So, in the previous session, I have discussed about what is law of variable proportion and production function, production function with only one variable input. So, as I have discussed about production function, so with one variable input, we have done with in the uh, previous session. If we are considering two variable inputs, so what is the production function and what it is called? It is called as isocont. Okay. So, production function with multiple variables of inputs, let's discuss in the next session. So, today's session is all about what is isocon, iso cost, marginal rate of technical substitute that we call it in short MRTS and least cost combination of inputs. So coming to production function with two variable inputs. So coming to this two variable inputs, here we are considering two variables as capital and labor as two variable inputs and now we are going to see what is the mathematical expression for this production function with two variable inputs. That is Q is equal to F of capital that is C L that is labor. Okay. When we consider two factor inputs that is capital and labor, we get isocons. So what is this isocons? Isocons are also called as in different curves in case of consumer behavior. So what are these indifference, indifference curves now? So indifference curves means, for example, I like to buy two products. Like I like to buy a pant and a shirt. I am getting satisfaction to buy a pant is equal to the satisfaction if I buy a Sure. So, if I am buying more amount of pants and less amount of shirts, that is, I buy four pants and one shirt, I am getting some satisfaction. Let's say, I'll uh, just measure it in terms of utilities, that is, 10 utilities. If I buy four shirts and one pant, I am getting 10 utilities. If I get Five, uh, five pants and only one, uh, no shirts, but still I'm going to have the same uh, satisfaction. So this we have discussed in uh, law of demand or conceptions, consumer behavior laws. So just like the indifference curves in consumer behavior, we are dealing with production now where we call that as isoquant. We call it as isocon. So here all the factors, all the all those factors are going to be constant, and we are going to talk about only two input factors. And with these two input factors, what is the level of output? That is what we study in this isocon. So coming to this isocon, isocon curves. So coming to isocon curves. Let's understand what is isocon now. So iso, iso means equal, iso means equal, quant means quantity, quantity. So isocon means equal quantity, okay. So here for any input, for any combination of two inputs will give us equal quantity of output. That is what is isocont and we call this isocont as we call this isocont uh, uh, as isoproducts product curves also so now coming to a small problem or small uh, example we can uh, plot the isocont curve here okay so here the combinations i have taken it to be a b c d now we have considered capital and 
labor as two input factors to study the production function with two input factors right so capital is rupees in lakhs we have taken and labors in number of labors so here capital is 9 lakhs 6 lakhs 4 lakhs and 3 lakhs and labor is 5 5 5, five members 10 members 15 members and 20 members now let's see how the curve looks like okay so here we are considering labor on x axis and capital on y axis so here labor on x axis right so here we are considering both x axis and y axis as input factors for production for a given set of production so here when we consider five members of labor when we are taking five number of laborers we are going to get we are going to invest 9 lakh rupees as capital okay so here this combination here we are giving 9 lakhs amount as capital and five laborers here we can get a point called a okay we get a point called a so now let's see here when the capital is 6 lakhs here labor increased okay so here this combination that is 6 lakhs capital and 10 uh, laborers will give a point b and now coming to 4 lakhs capital and 15 labor we get point c and 3 3 lakhs capital and 20 labor will give point d now we when we join all these points we get this curve so this curve is called as isoquant curve it is called as isoquant curve so i'll just write it as i i q uh, i q 1 so here what is the output we are going to get only 10000 units we are going to get for example right so here when we consider any combination of capital and labor will give us only 10000 units of products so here when we are taking these two combinations here i we have plotted a b c d we can also plot some more points here here or here anywhere on this graph anywhere on this graph we can plot any point any combination of labor and capital will give us only 10000 units of output that is what this isoquant curve says so we may get a doubt that when we require 20 uh, 20000 units of products how we do uh, the production so for that what we need to do is we need to increase the level of production so that we also get another curve like this which is 20000 isoquant curve with the output of 20000 so again we take the level of uh capacity we have increased so we get another combination here uh then th <clears throat> that is going to give us 20000 our products as output so this is all about uh, isoquants and let's discuss about uh, what are the features of isoquant so coming to features of isoquant first one is it is downward sloping so as every degree of substitution is assumed uh, between all the both the factor of production it is downward downward sloping and next it is convex to the origin it is convex to the origin because uh, all the input factors are not perfect substitutes here okay one input factor can be substituted by other input factor in a diminishing marginal rate and it does not intersect with any other curves because each of the factor denotes some level of output and it does not touch x axis because they are producing some level of output so it they are, for every 
combination of uh, inputs uh, is required to get some total output. So, they do not touch x axis. So, these are the features of isocon. So, as I was telling, they are not perfect substitutes. So, we can see two different isocon curves that is, when the isocon curve is, is where it, it is a perfect substitute. When we have uh, capital and labor as perfect substitutes, then our isocon curves looks like this. Okay. So, x1 uh, represent let us say 100 units of pr uh, production, x2 represent 200 units of production, x3 represent 300 units of production. So, here we can see in this uh, isocon curves where uh, the input factors are perfect substitute. When both are perfect substitute, our curves are slanting lines like this. Okay. So, now the isocon curves where the factors are non-substitutes. When they are not uh, a perfect uh, non-substitutes, then our isocon curves look like a L shaped curve. Okay. So, here is the, uh, uh, here we can see this. So, for 25 number of units of uh, capital, we give 5 units of labor, a 20, 15, 10 or 5. So, here also like unit of labors is fixed uh, to some extent and later units of uh, capital is fixed. So, here the labor is increasing. So, when they are not perfect substitutes, we can see isocon curves to be of L shape. And if they are perfect substitute, we can see they are a slanting lines. Here also we can see here x1 and x2. Here so let us take uh, like 100 units can be produced and 200 units can be produced. So, this is all about isocon curves with perfect substitutes and with not perfect substitutes. So, what are the applications and assumptions of uh, isocon curve? Let us see now. So, coming to the applications of uh, uh, isocon curves, where do we apply these? So, these are going to helpful in firms adjusting their input against their output and this is used for microeconomics uh, to measure the influence of input on production level and output possibilities. And these curves are uh, lines are really important for analyzing the producer, uh, producer and uh, these curves will give us some possible combinations uh, to know uh, at a, uh, to be used uh, as a factor inputs to know the uh, products. And now coming to the assumptions of this isocon curve. Here we are going to consider only two factor inputs that is the first assumption. And next one is here they are divisible into small number of units like uh, we, we use the various proportions and these are uh, assume that all the technical conditions of the production are not possible to change at any point of time. So, once we are fixed that this is the level of activity that is 10,000 units we require as a output, we are going to fix that output and we cannot change that output immediately, right. So, that is another one more example, uh, one more assumption. So, these uh, are different factor of productions are used uh, in a most efficient way. So, these are the assumptions of isocon curves. Now, let us discuss about what are iso cost curves. So, iso cost, so just name itself says iso means equal as we discussed, right. Now, cost, it is of course, it is an expenditure for the manufacturer. Or the producer. So now, ISO cost. So here, the main name itself by just listening to the name itself, we can understand. So we a producer is going to have any combination of two input factors is giving the same expenditure. Okay. So a manufacturer is uh, getting same 
incurring same expenditure with two input uh, factors. So here, these ISO cost curves uh, refer to that cost curves that is representing combination of inputs that will that will cost the producer the same amount of money. Okay, so it is representing the particular level of total cost as we have discussed like a particular level of activity of production here also we have the particular level of uh, cost total cost is uh, determined. So you can see a cost curve like this. So here on x axis uh, we have labor on y axis we have capital. So here the both the combinations any combination of labor and capital is incurring same amount of capital same amount of expenditure that is same uh, amount of cost so this is total cost okay so this we call it as total cost for example this is the total cost 4 lakh rupees right with two input factors that is capital and labor okay so here the the production though if we want to increase the total productivity definitely we want to we need to increase the total cost also so at a given point that is total cost is 4 lakhs we can take any combination of these two uh, factor inputs that is labor and capital so here if the total cost is 5 lakh rupees total cost is 5 lakh rupees so our curve may be like this okay so the combination of capital and labor is different okay so this is how a iso cost curve looks like where it touches x axis and y axis okay so this is what is iso cost curve now, uh, like how the ISO cost li line is expressed in mathematical way, we can see this cost is equal to WL plus RK. So cost that is C is cost of production, W is price of labor or wages, L is units of labor, R is the interest rate which we are paying for the capital which we have acquired which we have invested and k is capital okay so this is a mathematical expression so as i was telling so we have different uh, iso cost lines so here a b a1 b1 and a2 b2 okay so this is let us say first curve uh, represent like uh, 10000 cost 10,000 cost and second one represent 20,000 total cost third one represent 30,000 as total cost okay so these are the iso cost lines okay so here any combination uh, on this uh, like if we plot any point on this particular line which gives the same same cost which is incurred by a manufacturer okay so here the total cost incurred is 10,000 okay so this is all about uh, ISO cost curves now let's know about what is marginal rate of technical substitute so marginal rate of technical substitute here this marginal rate of technical substitute says that any rate of substitute can be input factor can be substituted with some other fa factor of input so like just like isocons in isocons what we have discussed if we increase the total input factor of capital we can decrease the total capital of labor okay so here uh, marginal rate of technical substitute uh, is just same right so here the marginal rate of technical uh, substitute says the rate at which 
one can substitute input as a labor for another input such as capital without changing the resulting output so without any change in the total production so one can substitute labor with capital or capital with labor that is here both are perfect substitutes okay so that is what is marginal rate of technical substitute so here the formula uh, given for marginal rate of technical substitute is that is here we have considered only two that is labor and capital so it is equal to minus change in capital by change in labor so k is capital l is labor mp here we can also express in this way that is mp l and by mp k so uh, change in capital divided by change in labor is equal is uh, amount of capital that can be reduced when labor is decreased okay so this is how the marginal rate of technical substitute looks like so it is just this is also a isoquant curve okay this is an isoquant curve here we can see uh, labor on x axis and uh, capital on y axis so here this is an isoquant curve what is the mrt is that is marginal rate of technical substitute so at a point a at point a at point a we can see like 12 units or 12 lakhs of capital is required and we require one unit of labor okay so at point a and coming to point b 8 lakhs capital we require and 2 lakhs uh, sorry 2 uh, labor we require and coming to the next point that is c we require let us say 5 units of uh, 5 uh, lakhs capital we require and 3 labors we require. So here we can see there is a combination, there is a combination of two input factors which is giving the isoquant curve, right? That is 100 units we are going to produce with these combinations, right? So here what we can see is what is the change in capital here to meet this particular point? Okay, so this is the change in capital and this is the change in labor. So, how much change in capital? What is the rate of change in capital and what is the rate of change in labor we study? That is the, this part we call it as marginal rate of technical substitute where this is the initial MRTS. Okay, you can observe this. And coming to the second one from B to C, here the change in capital, the change in capital for the initial MRT years, the change in capital is more, the change in labor is less. And coming to the next one, you can see that change in capital has reduced and change in labor uh, may be remaining same. And this part, and this part and this part. So after the initial MRTS, yes, the, uh, the rest of the MRTS yes are reducing. Okay, the change in the change in capital or change in uh, change in uh, uh, MRTS yes or MRTS yes is reducing at a diminishing rate. Okay, so this is what is MRTS yes, where the change in capital and change in labor is studied for. Uh, two individual points on isoquant curve. So now coming to the next part that is least cost combination of input. So a combination of iso cost and isoquant give us least cost combination of input. So here what is the combination of isoquant and iso cost curves? Here, these are the three ISO cost curves, ISO cost curves, and this is ISO quant curve, right? So, because ISO quant curve does not touch any axis and it is not intersecting, so it should not intersect uh, any point. So, here, why this graph, ISO quant curve graph, 
is tangent to the total cost that is uh, the iso cost curve okay these are the iso cost curves so i iso cost curve 1 iso cost curve 2 iso cost curve 3 okay so here we can also draw one more isocont curve like this so this is isocont curve 1 this is isocont curve 2 and we can curve one we can also draw one more uh, one more uh, isocont curve like this that is isocont curve 3 so here always the isocont curves are tangent to isocost curves that point we need to remember here, coming to this least cost combination of inputs. So, one must know what is the least cost combination. We know like more of capital and less of labor is giving some equal amount of total cost. But what is the optimum level of, of uh, looking for the combinations of labor and capital in case of ISO cost as well as in case of ISO cons. So, which is giving the more optimization? So, to determine that optimi optimization of combination of both input factors that is labor and capital, we are uh, studying this least cost combination of inputs. So, here least cost combination of input factors refer to firm which is getting the largest volume of output from a given cost outlay of factors when when they are combined in the optimum manner okay so here a producer will be in equilibrium when the uh, uh, like uh, when the cost price is fluctuation uh, price function uh, he maximizes his profits right one must uh, like look for maximizing the profits right so here what is the best combination we need to check that is here wherever the point of tangential of iso cost and iso quant curve there we have the best optimization point here you can see this points okay so from here we go with expansion we go with expansion of the of the firm here the the combination at this particular point, we are at the point of tangential of ISO cost and ISO quant curves, the firm is getting optimized. This is the best uh, combination to have least cost and optimum input factors. That is what we can see. So, this is all about least cost combination of input factors. So, thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.